metal box is often shown with up to three of its sides visible to the camera. Each shiny metal surface has its own family of angles to produce a pleasing reflection. Starting with a view that shows only two sides, top and front, we can see that each produces its own direct reflection, controlling its brightness and tone through lighting and surface choice. How does the surface make a difference? As you can see, the front of the box seen from this three-quarter top view reflects the black surface. If we don't want it to appear dark, the only way we can change that is to place a reflector card right up against the box on the surface where it is in the shot. This is not the most desirable solution. So let's look at some other options for solving this problem. First, we could simply replace the dark background with a light toned one. As you can see, the front surface of the box is now much lighter as it is reflecting this surface. This is certainly a simple solution, but the box now looks a little dull and bland. It needs the contrast of shiny and bright versus dark. The second possibility is to place the box on a transparent glass or plexiglass surface suspended above a dark background as shown here. By suspending the glass above the dark surface, we can now position a reflector card or additional light where the optimal reflection occurs, below the glass and in front. You'll notice the glass reflects the light source on top and creates a reflection on the box. If we want to eliminate this, we can use a polarizing filter on the lens and rotate it until the polarized reflection is eliminated. Remember, direct reflection on metal is not polarized until the light source itself is polarized, so it is not affected by this filter. A third approach is to use a technique known as invisible light. This will only work on a glossy black surface such as plexiglass. Lighting from the top as before on the surface, we can add a light from just above camera, pointed down, to bounce light into the front surface of the box from the reflected black surface. Because the family of angles that creates this reflection is facing away from camera, we don't see the light source reflected in the black surface, only the highlight it makes on the box itself. So far we've worked only with mostly flat metal surfaces. A round object such as a Christmas ball or doorknob presents different challenges. A round object has a huge family of angles, 360 degrees, which also includes objects such as the camera or your own body operating the camera. We can eliminate many objects that create distracting reflections from the scene, but one we can't eliminate is the camera itself. Once again, there are three possible solutions to this problem. We can camouflage the reflection, keep the camera in the dark, or put the subject in a tent. Camouflage here refers to any desirable clutter or props we can include to hide some of those annoying reflections. Objects related to the subject work best. To keep light off the camera, shoot with as long a lens as you can to get some working distance from the object. That will make it easier to keep it dark and unobtrusive. You can also cover the camera with black paper or cards and even shoot through a black board with a hole cut out just for the lens. That way, the camera operator won't show in the shot as well. This approach can work in a larger studio area, but in a small space, only making a tent will work. A tent is a white or translucent white enclosure that serves as both the environment and the light source for the subject. The subject goes inside this tent and you shoot through a very small opening in it. An ideal tent would be a perfectly smooth dome with a hole for the lens but in reality you'd have to make a different one every time you change the camera angle because the hole for the lens would change position each time. Commercially made plastic tents have multiple holes and seams in them so this is not the best solution. Make your own instead with white seamless paper you can curve and cut to suit the particular situation. You can also use diffusion materials such as tracing paper or professional materials such as tough Rolex. The diffusion material in front allows you to position lights behind it for optimal reflection control. This solution may render the object too flat and evenly lit, however, so employing a bit of strategically placed camouflage can complete the picture in a more pleasing fashion. Placing bits of black card or paper on the diffusion material can often help to create more tonal variation in the object as well. 
A last resort is the judicious application of dulling spray. Be careful with this, as too much overall will change that shiny surface to a matte one. Localizing the spray on just the most distracting reflections will retain enough of the shiny metal look. Our next subject, glass, can be photographed well using some of the metal lighting techniques, but also has a few unique challenges of its own. Watch the next video to see them in action.